Five forbidden places on earth. We dare you to visit this. No, I'm not an answer. I don't dare you to visit this. But first, I dare you to stay your ass home and stop trying to talk to niggas. We gotta make the five forbidden places in a black household, bro. Nigga, number one, your parents' bedroom. Oh, yeah? You cannot go in without permission, nigga. Number two, your parents' bathroom. Your parents' bathroom. You said number three, your parents' purse. Oh, bro. Your parents' wallet. No, man. All right, but anyway, man, we're gonna get straight to this video, man. Yo, shout out to, uh, what's his name? Chills? It's not Chills. The world is full of beauty and mystery. And with modern day transport, it's easy enough to journey to anywhere you want to experience the local culture and sites. Yeah, there bro. are, that's though, a number of places where visitors are not welcome, whether it be for their own safety or the safety of others. In this video, we'll feature five forbidden places on earth that we dare you to visit, if you're brave enough. Before we begin, make sure you hit that subscribe. How much you wanna bet on this video? I'm, 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 um, I'm gonna call it out right now. Be an island with indigenous people on it that don't know nothing of like like technology that we have. And to get notified every day for more amazing content. With that being said, let's begin. Number five, Snake Island, Brazil. Snake Island? The snake sends shivers down oh, your spine. Oh, i Snake Island, bro. This is the last place yeah, on this. earth you'll ever visit. Because the Forbidden Island- Oh, movie, that's the first thing oh, you said. Know. You said it's gonna be on the island, bro. Nah. I say it's gonna be like an island of like people who don't even like know anything about the technology that we have. It's gonna be in business people. When the Pia de Comeda Grande is home to one of the most oh, 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 that shit looks nasty to look at. Located 20 miles south of the coast of Sao Paulo, the, the Brazilian government has banned anyone from visiting this treacherous Ew. place. But that doesn't stop a brave few from setting foot on its shores. From a distance, of it course. seems like any other island in that region. But this 4.6 million square foot outcrop is the only known habitat for the Bothrop Sensularis, also oh, known oh, as oh. the Golden Lancehead Viper. There are a lot of them Ew, here too, what? with estimates suggesting as many as 4,000 of the snakes writhing around the island searching for food. <sighs> Growing up to 46 inches long, the Golden Lanceheads get their name because of their distinctive heads. They're the dominant predator on the island, and even the Brazilian Navy avoid it at all costs. Only daring to venture there to tend to the automated lighthouse that was quickly built in 1909 before the borders fled. It's not known for sure how the snakes ended up here, but the prevailing theory is that they were trapped that island, when the sea levels rose 11,000 years ago. Due to their isolation on the island, the snakes have developed the fastest acting and most deadly venom of any snake in the world. And if a human were to be bitten, they would need immediate medical attention to treat the rapidly melting flesh and high probability of death. The reason why the vipers have become so dangerous is simply due to their need to feed. The only real source of food for them on the remote island are birds. But by the time most snake toxins would incapacitate them, they would have been able to fly quite a distance leaving the snake without its meal. Instead, the golden lance heads developed a way to kill their prey almost instantly by using toxins five times stronger than their mainland relatives. Numerous stories are told of misfortunate people who found themselves on the island. The original lighthouse keepers were attacked by snakes who came through the windows and their bodies were found scattered across the island. It's the island's name that gives the biggest clue to its danger, like translating as the island of slash and burn fire. Visit here if you dare, but you might not get out alive. Number four, the Sentinel Island. It's a fucking scary movie. The North Sentinel Island lies in the Bay of Bengal, 
and is one of the last places on Earth that humans oh. live unconnected with the outside world. The tribe, <laughs> yeah. known as the Sentinel Lees, have lived here for almost 60,000 years, and they Dude, don't like dumb nigga, that, Bro, there's really places like that, bruh. Where it's like they know nothing. Like, they're locked away from the world. Like, they know nothing. Like, they see a helicopter, go, what the fuck is... Like, nigga, you know that's they, crazy. They don't know what the hell. This shit like that in America, like... Yeah. Bro, we be knowing so much about technology, but we don't be knowing much about countries, bro. The island itself it's is pristine it. and unaffected by modern machinery. It's covered in thick forest, and the coast is surrounded by vibrant, unexplored reefs. Okay. The indigenous people have been recorded throwing arrows at low-flying aircraft and helicopters, <laughs> and any attempts at communication have been reject forced. Even following the devastation of the tsunami in 2004, they were seen aiming arrows at an emergency rescue helicopter, an act that was taken as evidence that the tribe had survived and should be left alone. Because of their isolation, very little is known of the Sentinelese people. They're hunter-gatherers who move and live in different parts of the island depending on where the food sources are, and there are thought to be between 50 and 500 of them. Attempts in the 70s and 1990 to make contact were responded to with arrow fire, and two fishermen who spent the night in their boat near the island were killed in their sleep. This hostility and the clear disinterest in being in contact with the rest of the world has led to Survival International, the organization that monitors and protects tribal people, recommending that they be left alone. Their lack of contact with others will also mean that they'll be vulnerable to common diseases that they have no resistance yeah, to. Yeah, so that's the only, that's the scariest shit to think about. Like, bigger them niggas are so isolated to the point that if we was to go there and try to, like, Nigga, we could kill them off by the simplest shit by coughing on them because mm -hmm. they're not immune to diseases that we are because mm -hmm. they're so locked away. Mm -hmm. Like they're they're like we're so the reason why we're we're, we're we're we get barely sick like that is because we're immune to that shit. We we're so used to getting sick yeah. and shit after generations and shit. But nigga, these niggas, bro, they can die just by a, a cold, bro, because they're not used to that shit. The nation of their society would almost certainly end badly and reinforce their distrust. Out of respect. The Indian government has ruled it illegal to get within five kilometers of North Central. The most we'll ever learn about this unique. <laughs> 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 I was like, that balloon. I don't know. I can't. 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 Bro, they they were throwing spears at the helicopters. Like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? And you know how the helicopter had to beat them motherfuckers all along. Yeah. Nigga, them motherfuckers. Nigga, that's that. All along. Come on, wait. Nigga, 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 Perhaps one day they'll want to venture beyond their shores, but with rumors of cannibalism and extreme tribal rituals, it's unlikely there will be too many volunteers wanting to get to know oh, them. Shit, Number cannibals? three, Chernobyl. If you're a daring adventurer and looking for somewhere truly unusual to visit, then the town of Chernobyl in northern Ukraine should be on your list. It used to be a bustling town with more than 16,000 inhabitants, but events that took place in 1986 meant that the entire region was quickly evacuated. On the 26th of April that year, the nearby nuclear power plant was conducting a systems test on its fourth reactor, but something went terribly wrong. There was a sudden surge of power and when the emergency oh, shutdown was initiated, a further surge occurred that triggered a series of explosions. This the core of like the reactor became exposed and caused a it fire is. that sent a plume of highly radioactive smoke into the atmosphere. This plume <laughs> drifted across <laughs> large parts of the Soviet so Union and across Europe and turned Chernobyl into a wasteland. Mm. The Soviets tried to cover up the incident, but when the radiation alarms were set off at the Forsmark power plant in Sweden, more than a thousand kilometers away, officials had no choice but to own up to what had happened. The okay, I, I get confused about how this whole radiation shit works, right? Mm -hmm. I, I I get it doesn't even look like I mean it looked like it looked abandoned as fuck. Right. But like nigga, you could look at that shit with the naked eye and be like, oh man, it's good here. 
I can just walk around here. <laughs> but in reality, bro, you about to get your shit torched, <laughs> bro. You about to be into a mic. You about to walk into a, a microwave. microwave like, cool. bro, that shit is wild, bro. I don't get how that shit works. It's like you can't see the shit. Yeah, you can't see it, bro. One of only two to ever be classified as a level seven event on the international nuclear event scale, with the other being the Fukushima disaster in 2011. Today, there's a 19-mile exclusion zone around the reactor to prevent people from coming into contact with the most radioactive area that will take hundreds, if not thousands, of years to recover. It's one of the most radioactive areas in the world and draws scientists and tourists from all over, although the time you can spend there is limited. The town was abandoned in such a haste that you can still see shoes, cups, and toys where they were left in the panic. Damn, and the Chernobyl Fairground, which was due yeah, to open a few days shit. after the accident, lays in ruins, yeah, never having been too. used. There's one unexpected positive to the evacuation, though, and that's the effect it's had on the local wildlife. Species oh, roam free, fish. and even rare birds have increased their numbers in the area. Tests are really? regularly carried out to see if the That's local crazy. fauna is being affected by the radiation, and while levels Isn't are present, bad, it's not affecting animal populations. Like in fact, they're thriving, which just goes to prove a pretty stark reality. The presence of humans has a far more detrimental effect on animal habitats than even a yeah. nuclear disaster does. Yeah. Number two, Heard Island. Heard Island is part of a remote sub-Antarctic chain of volcanic islands in the southern Indian Ocean. It's approximately at the midpoint between Australia and South Africa, at only 1,600 miles from the continent of Antarctica. Its complete isolation means that this is one of the last places on Earth untarnished by human activity or the introduction of alien species. It's covered with snow and glaciers, with a 2,745 meter tall volcano called Big Ben rising at its center. As it's remained undisturbed for centuries, the island is a great place to see natural forces at work. With constant glacier flows, an active volcano, and a wealth of animal species who seek refuge from the deep, cold ocean that surrounds it. It lies under the jurisdiction of Australia and has been designated as a marine reserve with a number of creatures that are unique to the island, meaning people aren't allowed to get anywhere close without express permission. It's not the sort of place you'd accidentally show up at either. It's a two-week voyage from Australia that passes through some of the most hostile ocean environment on Earth. The sheer cost of reaching Heard Island means that boats only occasionally reach it, on average once every three years, and they're all chartered for scientific missions. Sadly, the island is more susceptible to global climate changes than many other places, and the impact in recent years has it's been a school clear. Clock, right? The glaciers right, have um, noticed. Let me pause this shit. Let me just say something. We let this video play long as hell. But let me say what happens, y'all. Uh, we really be learning shit. Yeah. <laughs> I, was learning. Right, I ain't gonna lie, I was into this I shit. I was like paying attention to what the fuck you're talking about. So I, saw a video, every three years? I saw a video similar to this, but like it was like, there was a part where there's an island where he's like, it's called, I think it's called like Sleepy Island or some shit. Mm. And you go into that island, bro, you will fall asleep, bro. Shit. Like, I saw this nigga like this, and this nigga was like laying like that. But this has opened up fertile soil and created numerous ponds and pools that are now teeming with life. If you're looking for solitude or simply an adventure and have deep enough pockets, then Heard Island is one of the last true wildernesses on the planet and we dare you to visit. Yes, you'll be subjected to endless rain, snow, and freezing temperatures, but you'll have visited a place where very few have set foot before you. Number one. Monkey, Monkey Island. Island. Cayo Santiago is an island off the coast of Puerto Rico. Commonly referred to as right. Monkey Island, don't be under the impression that it's full of cute little animals ready to play with you, <laughs> because the reality of this place is a lot darker. The story began in 1938 when an American primatologist, Clarence Ray Carpenter, released 400 rhesus macaques. Rather than trying to Damn. populate the island, he was the first of many to conduct experiments Did looking at their behavior in adverse situations. He realized that it would be what much easier to breed a population yeah. close to home instead of chasing around for specimens in Africa, so his idea test site was born. For the following 80 years, the site was used to conduct tests that ranged from the harmless, like observation, 
to the more sinister, such as disease research. Up until recently, there were almost 1,000 monkeys living on the island, and most of the time it seemed like they were observing the humans rather than the other way around. But you mustn't get too close to them, because they are all natural carriers of a virulent strain of herpes B, a form of the virus that can be deadly to humans. What's told is not to let the monkeys pee on you. Put that to the side though, and what you'll find yeah, is a beautiful island full of nature's most inquisitive animals. As things stand, the site is technically public property so anyone can visit, but moves are being made to change the rules so only scientists aligned with the facility are allowed to set foot on the island. Sadly, Hurricane Maria that tore through the Caribbean in late 2017 made landfall at Cayo Santiago and devastated the island. With few places to hide, it was feared that a lot of the monkeys would have lost their lives in the storm. Luckily, the number still to be thriving, though, so if you're daring enough to visit a place where humans have to eat food whilst sat inside a cage as monkeys look on, you'll find plenty to see. Super exciting news, everybody! The time Don't is- Don't give a single flying flipping fuck! I Super you exciting much. news, man! Alright, yeah. but hey man, let's make sure y'all go subscribe to this nigga in the comment. Uh, I yeah, ain't gonna lie, this felt like I was in school, you know, yeah. the teacher pulled out that TV. Yeah, 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 Should've been getting me- I thought I was in school Brain pop like quiz shit! shit. Which brain one, pop, what's it called? Yeah, brain pop, I remember that shit was fun. Yeah, you got you learn a lot from brain pop. Man, yeah. I can feel like that Snake Island shit, that shit, yeah. That one looks scary as shit, but that if I ever see a yellow motherfucker, bro, nigga, I am turning around. You that Snake Island, but you're not coming out alive, bro. That'll be it for this video, man. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, man. Comment down below if you want to see more videos like this. And please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, subscribe if you're new. God loves you. God bless you. And we see you.